Hello guys and welcome back to yet another video. Back in July of the year 2000, Apple released what was to be their very last CRT display. I actually happen to have that very 17 inch Apple Studio display and it really needs a lot of cleaning. I know I really say that about basically everything I review, but this thing really needs a lot of cleaning. Anyway, let's check it out. I've had this display in my possession for nearly six years. It sat on our shed that whole time and has never been tested. Before we clean it, I'll try it out with my Power Mac G4. The reason I'm using that computer is because it's the only one I own with an ADC connector. It feeds the display with power, data, as well as USB. The display appears to work fine. Those weird scrolling lines are a result of the refresh rate not matching the shutter speed of the camera. When I flipped the display over, I actually found a small lizard, or more specifically, a gecko. And my guess is it's either gotten trapped in there or was living in there. We definitely have to get it out safely. There were no tutorials online that I could find to help me take apart the display. So I just started unscrewing screws. There were several hex as well as Phillips head screws around the monitor. I removed all of the ones I had immediate access to. I wiped off the surface to make it slightly cleaner to work with. Next I removed the small perforated air vent. In hindsight I didn't actually need to do this and it was incredibly hard to dislodge but oh well. The transparent outer casing was held in place by six plastic clips. With a lot of force and wiggling it eventually came free. With some high pressure air, I blew out a lot of the loose debris. I was also able to free our little lizard friend. Thankfully, I managed to release him back into our garden without injury. Next, I began a thorough cleaning of the case and the display. My cleaning weapon of choice in this case is methylated spirits. It's very effective at removing built up grime and leaving the surface free of smudges. Being alcohol based, it actually evaporates very quickly as well. The outer casing definitely resembles that of an Apple eMac. Aside from some scraping on the outer casing due to normal use, it cleans up very well. I also applied some cut and polish to many of the scuff marks. However, this had little effect sadly. The translucent stand also cleaned up very well. Remember when Apple included stands with their displays? After a wipe down, I partially removed the face of the display to blow out any leftover debris. It was at this point that I also realized that some of the protective coating on the display had worn off. There we have the cleaned up internals of the display. I'm not going to take it apart any further as there is significant danger in doing so. The inner display shroud slotted on. I gave it one last wipe to make it as clean as possible. The outer casing clicked back into place after a bit of encouragement. With all the screws in place, I fitted the stand back on the display. Booting it up again, I was very happy to see it was still fully functional. The screen really is a thing of beauty, and the positives don't just stop at looks. It has a maximum resolution of 1600 by 1200 at 64 Hz. However, I feel that 1280 by 1024 at 75 Hz is a far more usable resolution on a display of this size. If you crank it all the way down to 640 by 480, it'll even run at 154 Hz. Pressing this small button on the front will open the display settings in Mac OS, which is pretty cool. I'd totally use this with my main computer if it wasn't for the ADC connector. My Power Mac G4 isn't exactly powerful, so I can't really show off any modern games. But it kind of runs Halo Combat Evolved. Imagine if I could actually take advantage of that really high refresh rate. Sadly, we are definitely limited by the frame rate. Another cool feature of this monitor is its ability to self-calibrate. So, this must have been fairly expensive at the time, right? Well, no. This cost only 499 US dollars, stand included. This was released alongside the 22-inch LCD cinema display that cost a whopping 8 times as much at 3,999 US dollars. For such a high-quality, feature-packed CRT display, $499 in the year 2000 actually sounds like a pretty good deal. The design is truly eye-catching and I'm really glad that I restored it to its former glory. I'll be sure to keep it safe for many years to come. And I'm also really glad we managed to get our little gecko friend out safe and sound. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, feel free to leave a like 
And if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.